guys, before I start the video, don't forget to vote in the upper right corner for which car you think is gonna win this race. Also, come on, hit that subscribe button and check us out on Instagram. Let's do this. This is a 1968 Chevrolet Nova. Actually, pause that for a second and let's rewind and start over. We should be a little bit more professional with this car. Because if it's one thing that Cars and Zebras is known for, it's professionalism. This is a 1968 Chevrolet Chevy 2 Nova Supersport 396. Some people say that Chevrolet Novas are about as exciting as watching the price is right on a sick day. Price is wrong, b Well, that's definitely not true. These Novas are great little cars and they're fantastic performers on the drag strip, and you're gonna see that pretty soon. And speaking of performance, let's take a look under the hood. Oh yeah, that's 396 cubic inches of pure American muscle, putting out 375 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 415 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM, and that's all done with a compression ratio of 11 to one. Mmm, pure American muscle. But there's something even more unique about this engine. Have you noticed it already? Why don't you take a closer look at those heads? How about more closelier than that? Oh yeah, factory L89 aluminum heads. I guess you could say that this car has good head game. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking, it's Cars and Zebras, I don't think there were any L89 Novas that came from Chevrolet. Well, that was the general consensus until a 1970 model was discovered, and it had some reliable paperwork, and then in 2013 it sold at the Mecham Auto Auction for $190,000, and then what a coincidence, a few other people found L89 Novas in their garage, and before too long this one of one car is probably gonna be one of 75. What I'm getting at is that our featured car likely is not a real deal L89, but it is a very well documented and immaculately restored gorgeous L78 car with 375 horsepower. Hey, check it out, you guys. This one's got a four-speed, and I bet you like that, nasty little drag racers. And I want you to take a second to really look at that interior and appreciate some of the options that are present. The first, and maybe the most obvious, is the sport steering wheel. That was $31. The electric clock, that was $15. And, of course, the ultra-cool special instrument package, that's $95. Whoever originally bought this car, they weren't afraid to spend some money. And speaking of money, how about we take a short walk over to that car and check out the window sticker? It might surprise you. If you take a closer look, this thing's got some fantastic options. In fact, over $1,300 of options. And there you'll see the total. If we subtract the destination charges, this car would have cost $3,726.05. Adjusting for inflation, that'd be $27,636 today. Definitely not the cheapest muscle car we've seen on the channel, but a fantastic value for how much is included. Check it out, it's even got the ultra-rare bottled water option from GM. Mmm, it's actually a wonderful full-bodied 1968 vintage that is delicious, mmm. Novas are fairly lightweight, but considering that this one has the big block, it might be a little bit heavier than you expect. With driver, it's coming in at 3,570 pounds. Let's take a second to go back to that build sheet because this car is hiding a secret. Nah, I'm just kidding you guys. It's got 456 gears. That's all I wanted to say. But that's pretty cool, right? 456 gears! These cars are pretty rare. They only made 617 four-speed L78 Novas in 1968. And if you're interested, there were 50 automatic-equipped L78s. And what do you know, old Fred Gibb was the one that special ordered every single one of those automatic-equipped cars. He did this because he wanted to race them in the NHRA stock automatic class. But for them to qualify for that class, Chevrolet had to sell at least 50 of them, so he ordered 50. And here's that documentation showing that Fred Gibb did in fact order 50 1968 Chevrolet Novas equipped with the L78 and automatic transmissions. That is cool. Hot Rod Magazine tested an L78 in 1969. It was equipped with an automatic transmission and 355 gears, and it ran the quarter mile in 13.87 seconds at 105 miles per hour. But keep in mind, our featured car has a four-speed manual transmission, a great driver, 
really aggressive gearing, and no doubt it has been optimized for drag racing. What I'm getting at is that it's going to run a lot quicker than a 13.8. Just read the video description box, you guys. It outlines all of the modifications allowed in the pure stock class. But enough talk about this absolutely gorgeous 1968 Chevrolet Chevy 2 Nova Supersport. Let's check out its opponent. This is a 1965 Pontiac GTO, but this car is definitely a little more special than your standard GTO because it's a Royal Bobcat. And the Royal Bobcat was a package offered by Royal Pontiac out of Royal Oak, Michigan. How stately. <laughs> But seriously, Royal Pontiac did some really cool things to these cars to make them quite a bit quicker. For instance, they used a larger jet in the center carburetor, they milled down the heads and used thinner head gaskets to increase the compression ratio, they put in a distributor recurve kit, they installed rock arm studs so you could rev it out to 6,000 RPM without any issue, not to mention installed a lightweight fan to free up some horsepower. The Tri-Power GTO in 1965 had a 389 cubic inch engine. It put out 360 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 424 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM all with a compression ratio of 10.75 to 1. But if you got the Royal Bobcat treatment, that compression ratio is jumping up to about 11.2 to 1, and horsepower was probably more like 400, if not a little bit higher. You could get a two-speed automatic in these cars, that being the super turbine, but mm, no. Not in this one, that wouldn't really fit the profile. This Royal Bobcat deserves a four-speed manual, and that's exactly what it's got. And with that, you guys are excused to go change your underwear. 323 rear gears were standard on these cars, but from the factory you could get a set anywhere from 308 all the way to 390. But this car has a set of 410 gears. Even though the GTO looks like a heavy car, it really isn't. With driver, it's coming in at 3,692 pounds. And if you're keeping track, that's only 122 pounds more than the Nova. Not that bad. Car Life Magazine actually tested a GTO with the Royal Bobcat treatment in 1965, and it ran the quarter mile in 14.06 seconds at 102.14 miles per hour. Keep in mind that our featured GTO has stayed very true to those original specifications from Royal Pontiac, and so it's probably going to run an ET that's very similar to those previous reports. That's just a heads up for you guys, so if you're a Pontiac fan, now might be a good time to go and get your torch and pitchfork ready. You might not realize this, but the Pontiac Motor Division actually won the Motor Trend Car of the Year in 1965. Let's check out a commercial that Pontiac was using after they won that award. Actually, you know what? Before we get to that, what do you guys think of this print ad? Could you imagine a car company using something like this right now with a dead tiger on the hood of their car? I'm guessing it's a fake tiger, but still, people would lose their minds. And the Nova takes the win, running a very impressive 12.88 at 113.47 miles per hour. And the GTO ran a time that was very representative of the original testing, of 14.05 at 100.20 miles per hour. I would have to think that the tri-power setup on the GTO was really struggling because of all the storms that day and the barometric pressure changes. Regardless, when you're taking on an L78 or an L89, you better have a pretty good lead at mid-track because... That's when they really start to scream like a banshee. Let's check that out one more time. Thanks for watching you guys, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you at the next one.